Good afternoon. I'm Brett Wilsey, and welcome to today's Smart Investing Briefing. And I'm Chase Wilsey. You know, we haven't done one of these in a while, but today just huge news. We, we had to kind of talk about it, and for those of you that don't know, maybe some steps to kind of take moving forward. And what we're talking about is the Equifax, where they lost how many uh, personal information? Was a hundred and how many? 143 million people were jeopardized after a cyber breach. And not just jeopardized, but they took, or they stole, how do you want to say, they took names, social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, even driver's license. I mean, it, it's really a huge story. And I mean, you think about 143 million people. Took a look, there's 323 million Americans. So it's about half, right? Well, you also have right. to take into account those two-year-old kids, eh, they don't really have a credit profile. They have to be very rich. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's very close to about 50% of the population. If you have some type of you know, credit account, I mean, if you're over age 18, there's about a 50% chance that your information has been jeopardized. 50% chance, probably even higher than that, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, so it's that's pretty a, high. It's yeah. about 50%. And, yeah. the, and the credit card information was what, 200 and? There's about 208,000 credit card numbers that were also jeopardized during the cybersecurity breach. I mean, it, it, it's just catastrophic information mm -hmm. for Equifax. I mean, to be honest, I was quite surprised that the stock was only down about 13%. I, I would think the stock would fall about 50%. I mean, this is huge. Yeah, news. this is huge. And what I thought was funny too is that today is September 9th. This incident happened, or they learned of it, July 29th was the date. So what happened during this whole time frame it is amazing to me that they waited this long to release it, and some strange things happened in the meantime as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, kind of what time frame this whole event took place, they said about mid-May through July is mm -hmm. when the information was actually breached. And then again, that, that date they learned about it was July 29th. Now something really fishy is three major executives or high people up in the corporation sold stock after the breach. Yeah, like three days after, mm -hmm. about $2 million of stock. Mm -hmm. And one of them was even the CFO, and, and I have, find it hard to believe he did not know what was going on during this time frame. I mean, this is going to be a huge test for the SEC, yep. and kind of there's a new SEC head chair in place now. Right. This will kind of be his first big test. So kind of curious to see what happens there. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to be like <laughs> giving them a call. They probably got a phone call today saying, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" And, and we're going to be down to visit you guys. Um, but so far, there's been no unauthorized use of of it uh, on the card, so no evidence of uh, fraud yet. Yeah, no kind of unauthorized accounts were open unless you're at Wells Fargo then you got some more of those <laughs> yeah, yeah. or uh, no unauthorized charges on other people's accounts so I mean that is kind of positive and I guess industry standard typically and I call it industry you know stealing people's identities mm -hmm. once that occurs it's normally a pretty quick turnaround um, to have that unauthorized activity so I guess that is kind of a slight positive but again just a huge huge breach and the reason we did this uh, today was because you should not be sitting back and waiting for things to happen, saying, well, I hope they don't get me. What we want to talk about today also was what you can do to protect yourself. Uh, just very simple things. First of all, check your statements and your credit score. Um, and actually, Equifax is going to send direct mail and set up a website to see if you're compromised. So you guys take a little bit of action, unfortunately, yourself to get into this. I mean, it's really not a bad habit to get yourself into anyways. I mean, I, I know I check my credit score. I check my statements quite frequently to make sure you don't have any type of fraud that's occurring. I mean, especially now, if you haven't done it in years, let's say, now please time. go check your statements, <laughs> yeah. go check your credit score, make sure nothing crazy has happened. And uh, they are, they actually have already set up that website. I did go kind of check it out. How's it look? Pretty good. I think I was one of the lucky ones that actually did not have any um, exposure to the scandal. You know, I just realized I haven't checked it out myself yet. So when we're done, that's what I'll you be had doing. a busy day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a busy day. Don't you be too busy to do it too. But also, they are offering uh, Equifax is offering a one year of trusted ID Premier, I guess it's called, so that protects you against fraud. And there's some benefits through that as well. Yeah, what the service does is there's actually uh, credit file monitoring. They uh, monitor your social security number, make sure that accounts aren't being opened mm -hmm. under your social security. I mean, that is the big one, is a social security number. If that gets out there, you're not gonna see unauthorized charges. It's gonna be something fishy that shows up in your credit score maybe months down the road, because you're not gonna get a notification, oh, hey, by the way, you had this checking account or uh, credit card account mm -hmm. opening your social security number. No, that doesn't normally happen. So that's the one you really have to be careful of, and this protects against, against that. And also, what comes with the service is $1 million 
and identity theft insurance. Yeah. So, I mean, there are some positives to it, but I know a lot of lawyers are saying be very careful signing up for it because they're stating that if you sign up for the service, you forego your right of a class action lawsuit and are forced into arbitration. And don't get too excited about that because over oh, my 40 years of doing this, we've seen class action suits and I've seen people get checks of $5, $10 off these big suits. And again, there's a lot of people in this, this suit, so I'm not gonna give you legal advice, but I would say be logical and think about what really happens in these. And also too, you won't get a check next month or next week. It could be years down the road. And what you're really concerned about is protecting your credit, uh, doing the right thing. So I know I'm not gonna be part of the class action suit. And I, I don't think it's a bad idea. And lawyers may tell you otherwise, and right. especially lawyers that are pursuing this because quite frankly, they're gonna make probably big bucks. Oh, major bucks. Uh, they'll yeah. make the big bucks, but the, the consumers typically won't. And uh, you know, again, making sure your statements are okay and then maybe sacrifice and go into arbitration and making sure your accounts are okay moving forward over the next year, I think that's a much safer approach rather than not doing the service and then all of a sudden maybe three months down the road you forgot to monitor your account and you were a victim of fraud. Yeah. Then you're in a big, big situation that you wish you weren't in. Exactly. So maybe a smart thing to go through and maybe read the terms a little bit closer and understand your situation. Well, I hope you found this edition of the Smart Investing Briefing helpful to you. If you want more information, as always, go to our website, smartinvesting2000.com. Again, that's smartinvesting2000.com. And I'm Brent Wilsey. I'm Chase Wilsey. Thank you for joining us.